always sleeping. Leave me alone. <laughs> but you were the photographer at the studio. I don't care. I stay up late last night. But you had to work. Just, just go away. Just leave me alone. No, I, I, I want to sleep. Okay, I see. This is a perfect illustration of staying up late. It's a major drawback. Don't be like Boo. Be like me. Go to bed early and have a productive morning. Hi, this is IFO Junior Edition. Hey, welcome to IFO Junior Edition. This is Saturday night. On every Saturday night, we are gonna talk about a lot of topics with our expert in the discussion and also listen to some interesting presentation of Voice of the Week. And I'm so excited. How are you guys doing? I hope you guys are having fun with the weekend. And now, please take a look at the screen to listen to today's episode. Excuse you? Why well, you sit here? Can you stand up and do your homework? Or at least help your sister with her homework? Yeah, your sister is right. Look at Fung Yi, the girl next door. She's so perfect and her score is splendid. You should learn from her. Yes, come in. Mom hired her to tutor you. Yes, that's right. No way. Are you kidding me? I wish I had another sister. Stop underestimating me. It's just a number. It's not my future. None. Wow, interesting topic. Self-discipline, discipline. It is one of the four pillars in the success of all students. And one of those is self-discipline, which we are going to talk about today. And our expert for the discussion is such an amazing guest that he has the disciplines, he has the education philosophy centers around the discipline and also the success in students. He has been the founder and CEO of an education technology company, spent years in advising and assisting thousands and thousands of students, helping out themselves to believe in their potential and reach their dreams whenever they put their mind to it. So please welcome and help me in welcoming on the stage our expert today, Mr. Danny Huang. Hey, how's it going? Hi, how are you? Thanks for welcoming me here. Yeah, thank you so much for spending time. Please have a seat. Okay, how are you? Good, how are you? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm very good. Is this your first time being on IFO? Yes, it is. Thank you for inviting me here. Yes, um, so I've just introduced um, to all the audience um, about you as the founder and CEO of an educational technology company. Yes. So uh, would you mind sharing a bit more about your information history, background a little bit? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. So first off, I was born in Korea mm -hmm. and I immigrated to the U.S. at the age of five. Uh, I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Have you ever been to the U.S. before? Um, I went to U.S. twice. Have you, have you been to Atlanta, Georgia? Uh, no. So it's no. in the deep south and uh -huh. I spent uh, most of my life there attending public schools, mm -hmm. and I had the great privilege and opportunity to go to the United States Military Academy at West Point. Mm -hmm. uh, have you heard of that school before? Yeah, sure, West Point, um, which uh, education philosophy centers around the life of a disciplined. That's right. It, we actually have four pillars at West Point. Mm -hmm. It's character, physical, academic, and military. Wow. Okay, so how long have uh, had you been in West Point? So four years in, in a normal university, mm -hmm. and then upon graduation, I spent six years in the U.S. Army. Oh. I was an officer in the U.S. Army, and I served six years. Did two combat deployments, so I went mm -hmm. to Iraq, not on vacation, but to, to fight in war at a wow. very young age in my 20s. That's a very special life. I mean, um, six years in military, that was pretty a long time. And you'd volunteer to be in a military, right? Sure, so in America, there's uh -huh. no mandatory service. It's mm -hmm. uh, voluntary. So mm -hmm. I spent six years serving, and then I had the very unique opportunity to come to China mm -hmm. uh, to join my older brother. So yes. my older brother, his name is Sam, mm -hmm. and he graduated from MIT. And he started wow. an education technology company in China, and he invited me to join him. So. Uh, six years in the U.S. Army, and then yeah. now uh, 10 years in private education. 
Wow, so you are now an education strategist. Right. And um, yeah, I think your experience are really aligned with today's topic, which is about discipline. Oh, discipline, yes. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, first, first question I want to pose is that, what do you think is the definition of discipline? What is self-discipline? Sure. So I get this question a lot because yes. being in education, a lot of times parents come to me and they say, how can my children mm -hmm. be more disciplined? And the first question I ask is, are you a disciplined person? Mm -hmm. uh, because you have to lead by example, right? Yes. Kids always look up to mentors, role models, parents, and want to emulate or copy uh, their mm -hmm. behavior. So uh, my definition of discipline is discipline <laughs> equals freedom. 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 Because discipline can help you overcome your fears, yeah. can help you eliminate procrastination, mm -hmm. can conquer your weaknesses, mm -hmm. can help build physical training and mm -hmm. uh, very strong mental resilience. And in doing so, you can accomplish any objective you need to. Mm -hmm. So could you give me uh, some specific examples of discipline? Sure, absolutely. I think discipline has to start at an early age. So a lot of times people think because of my military background mm -hmm. that I'm a disciplined person. But I would, I would actually say that uh, my discipline started when I was a child mm -hmm. through the behaviors and the reinforcement of those behaviors from my parents. Mm -hmm. uh, a specific example is every weekend, mm -hmm. Saturday, just like today, yeah. uh, I would have to mow the lawn. Uh, have you ever done that before? Mm, nope. Okay, so mowing the lawn means you have to go outside and you have to cut the grass. Yes. And that's hard labor. And at the age of 10, in the hot summer of August in Atlanta, Georgia, I remember my hands were blistering and they started bleeding. So I went to my father and as a 10-year-old crying <laughs> and I said, Dad, I can't do this anymore. And you know what my dad said? He oh, said, what did he say? son, go put on gloves. So I walked into the garage, put on gloves and I continued. And I think at an early age, I learned the value of hard work. And through hard work, I developed a very disciplined, focused mindset to be able to accomplish anything I needed to. Wow. Do you think your self-discipline is part of um, nature, but also nurture? So I would actually say a lot of it's nurture. Yeah. Right? So an example would be how many kids actually make their bed. Right? Mm -hmm. We always say we have to start small. If we can do the small things, yeah. we can do the big things. Yeah. And uh, most kids will not make their bed. Right? But mm -hmm. if we ask our children at an early age and we teach them, once again, through our leadership, if parents don't make their bed, how can they expect their children to make their bed? Mm -hmm. But through that simple action of making their bed every single day, mm -hmm. uh, the child learns to be disciplined in a very specific and simple exercise. So the environment at home is really vital in promoting the self-discipline within us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think it's a combination of two factors. So at an early age, the parents instill those values, yeah. instill the value of discipline, instill the value of hard work. But at a certain age, the children need external, environmental, and or external factors, such as mentors yeah. and role models. Because they're going through this thing called puberty and, and a lot of change is happening. And during this time, parents need to be intentional and seek out mentors and role models that they trust mm -hmm. who share those same values. And in doing so, they reinforce the value of discipline, reinforce the value of hard work and these important values that you have been instilling in your kids at an early age. So the kids will be accompanied throughout all the way with the help of not only their family but also mentors and Absolutely. teachers in school. Can you tell me the difference between discipline and motivation? Because I believe that to do all of those work you had mentioned, you have to have something to push you yeah. to do. Absolutely. So I usually share a formula yeah. with, with parents and with students who ask me about this question. I think there is a formula for understanding how we can achieve discipline. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, we need mentors yeah. who then provide us with purpose. You know, if you wake up in the morning and you don't have a clear purpose, then it's very hazy about what you have to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, they provide us with motivation and discipline. Wow. So discipline should be go should be going with a motivation sure. purpose well there, there's two types of motivation right mm -hmm. we have intrinsic motivation mm -hmm. and we have extrinsic motivation so internal here yes external environment mm -hmm. uh, extrinsic motivation is usually what kids like to respond to because they like reward if you do something well you receive applause or a compliment or mm -hmm. praise from those loved ones your teachers your parents yeah uh, unfortunately that's very short-lived Right? And it, it is, in a way, it's superficial, right? Because you're seeking the approval and attention. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Rather, as we mature, as we understand about motivation, we need to train our mind to be able to find that motivation intrinsically from our mind. Mm. So, when, once we have motivation, we will soon train our self-discipline right. uh, from time to time. But a lot of our audience are, you know, the students and teenagers, and a lot of them told me that how could we get better at self-discipline sure. when we know that we have things to do, sure. for inst but, but we still don't really want to do it. For instance, a student, they go to school every day, they know that school is important, but they, they are aware that school is not that entirely important to be successful. Sure. So how could we get that self-discipline? Yeah, I mean, it goes back to the principle of doing something small, mm -hmm. doing it well, and then being able to do the big things, right? Oh. So an examples would be, it's not so much about being disciplined about school, it's about being a disciplined person. When you wake up in the morning, do you require your parents to wake you up? Do you wake up on your own mm -hmm. because you're motivated to wake up because you have a clear sense of purpose? Mm -hmm. Do you wake up because you have to go to school because you want to go to school, not because you're told to go to school? Mm -hmm. So this is about that intrinsic motivation that we need to inspire in ourselves. And in doing so, we build a disciplined framework. Mm -hmm. So I think we can talk a lot more about this and how to help the students and also teachers in school to build up a self-discipline in the next part of the talk. Absolutely. Yeah. So don't go anywhere because we'll be right back. Welcome back to this show, and we will continue with the talk with Mr. Danny. So in this show, we have the Mythbuster, where the expert will, you know, explain some myth and show your opinion. So the myth is discipline is hard for Gen Z. What do you think about this? Sure, so first off, I'm a millennial, believe it or not. Well, what are you? I'm a Gen Z. Okay, so let me ask you, do you feel like you're a disciplined person? Um, yes, for right now, but no in the past. Okay, so how do you define your level of discipline? Um, four to five out of five when I I really have the goal okay. and maybe two to three when I have nothing to do. Okay. So how do you measure that you are being disciplined? Like give me a specific action that you do that you mm -hmm. define as discipline. So once, for instance, I got a goal to get this specific grade and I will do some schedule and also timetable so that I could stick to that sure. uh, So until a point where I could get that grade and succeed. Okay. So you, that's talking about goal setting. Yeah. Uh, I think the first step is understanding what is discipline. Because when you ask most students mm -hmm. and you say, are you a disciplined person? They shy yeah. away and they say, no, I'm not. Yeah. Right? So if you don't even know what it means to be disciplined, then how mm -hmm. can you get there? Discipline is when you apply uh, and you study, you train mm -hmm. a set of systems of standards to, a, to achieve a meaningful objective. Mm. Right? So if you want to be a disciplined person, then you need to be able to follow through on the things that you say that you are going to do. That's right. uh, I think a lot of times parents think that they need to spoon feed mm -hmm. their children with all the values, with, with discipline, yes. and to teach them. Uh, however, I think it's more important for individuals to develop the mindset to want to, to be intrinsically motivated mm -hmm. to be disciplined. Wow, that's really amazing. And I believe that discipline is also about getting rid of like, you know, what you like at that moment and you desire that moment so that you can achieve bigger goals. Absolutely. Yeah. That's right. So um, what are some specific activities or like, you know, lessons that you can offer to the students so that they can get um, more self-discipline? Absolutely. So I think one of the things is we want to eliminate distractions, okay. right? So this goes back to, uh, conquering procrastination. A lot of times with technology, yeah. YouTube, right? Facebook, <laughs> Instagram. They watch social media all the sure. time. And, and honestly, like how beneficial is that mm -hmm. when you're trying to really focus, let's say on physics, or you're trying to prepare for the IELTS exam, yes. right? So we need to help eliminate distractions. And how can we develop that discipline framework? Well, we have to do it in baby steps. Mm -hmm. I think it's difficult for somebody who is constantly addicted to this type of social media to turn it off completely. Mm. So we have what we call accountability partners. An mm -hmm. example would be, let's say I spend a lot of time on my cell phone. And when I come home, I can make the decision, be intentional to give the cell phone to my mom, mm -hmm. to give the cell phone to my dad, or put it and lock it away. Mm -hmm. And so then I eliminate distractions mm -hmm. and I can focus on what I need to, to achieve a meaningful outcome. How could we eliminate the distraction? Sure, so the distraction itself is technology, yeah. right? We should, let's say, have our noses in the textbooks. 
or mm. be really focused on the academic learning objectives mm -hmm. rather than watching YouTube and playing video games. Mm -hmm. So in order to be disciplined, we have to make that intentional decision to be able to get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. But it's hard to do it just by yourself, right? So you have somebody else that you trust mm -hmm. hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. So you say, hey, every day when I come home, I will give you my cell phone. And let's say I forget, I conveniently forget. Mm -hmm. So then my mom or someone, my mentor would say, hey, give me your device, right? And this is how we build and instill discipline. Wow, so do you think that the journey to help others get their self-discipline is kind of hard? I actually think it's very meaningful, mm -hmm. right? So for me, uh, I lived in, in the military. I spent six years where I was serving my country. It was a very selfless endeavor. And now in private education, mentoring students and parents on a daily basis, I also consider as a very meaningful endeavor, mm -hmm. teaching these important values yes. and instilling discipline. So through discipline, we can have that freedom. Mm -hmm. So you just highlighted the importance of parents and also home education. Um, so what do you think parents should do to help their kids get more self-discipline? Sure. So once again, this goes back to leadership by example, mm. right? So anything you ask your children, you should be able to do yourself, right? So the example that I always give is making your bed, right? Mm -hmm. Or you say that you want to eliminate sweets or not drink Coke or soft drinks because that's not really healthy for you, but you're drinking it, right? Mm -hmm. So any rules that you establish, you want to be able to honor yourself and then of course hold yourself accountable and lead by example. Mm -hmm. So like uh, if the parents should be the first one to be disciplined. That's right. And then the kids will follow that. Of course, right? Mm -hmm. Because kids are always constantly looking at a uh, figure of authority to want to follow or emulate that behavior. So one more important question uh, is for the students and the young people. Uh, what should we do to be more disciplined? Sure. What should we do to be more disciplined? Well, I yeah. think the first step is you have to understand and define discipline as we did before, right? The second thing is, is you have to do an honest assessment, right? It's, you have to ask yourself and say like, why do I want to be disciplined? What can I gain as a result of being disciplined? And then the third thing is, is you have to do, right? You have to do it, right? Just like Nike, just do it. Uh, I think you have to make the decision intentionally to move forward with the decisions that you mm -hmm. make. So whether if I struggle with getting disciplined, then what should I deal with that? Exactly, so this is why you need mentors or what we call accountability partners, right? If I want to go work out at a gym every single morning, it might be hard for me to go in there by myself. But if I have a personal trainer or I have a training partner, then we can work out and push each other together. Same kind of mindset. If mm. I want to build discipline, first off, I need to have someone who is a disciplined person, mm -hmm. right? Intrinsically motivated to be disciplined, that person sets an example for me to follow. Wow. And that person can then help me and guide me. So this is the value of mentors and what they can provide. Wow, that's really amazing. I think these are the key takeaways for the parents and teachers and students who are watching the show. And thank you so much, Mr. Danny. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome back to the show. And this is the segment that I'm really interested in because I get to know more, a lot of more young, talented people out there. And one of the contestants of Voice of the Week um, is going to be a really interesting person and talented kid. Please take a look at the screen right away. Hello. Can you guess why I'm doing this uniform? This and that. I am going to fight. This is my favorite sport besides soccer and swimming. I think I forgot to do something. Oh yeah, I just forgot to introduce myself. My name is Wen Kang. I was born in the year of the dragon and now I am 8 years old. You know, I love English so much my parents told me that I could speak and learn English by just 3 years old. And now English helps me a lot, especially in reading and studying at school. Thanks for watching and see you in the IFO show. Please welcome to the stage, Ming Pao.
stupid. Um, this is not your first time being on TV, right? Yes. Can you tell me about other times that you were on TV shows? Yes, I did join a few game shows that all the, you know, I did see some videos on my YouTube and, you know, I did other stuff. Mm, do you like that? Mm, um, I like it a lot, but sometimes I would not like that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you like, um, you know, making a presentation in front of a lot of people? Yes, and I have it once already. Oh, really? Just, but it's, it's in my class. Mm -hmm. So, just like 20 people. Or something like 20 that. people, but right now millions of Vietnamese people are watching you. Wow. Mm -hmm. Doing presentation, so. Oh, no. Have you prepared well? Yes. Cool. Are you ready? I think so. Off you go to the stage. Good luck. The prompt for song is children should not watch television. Hello everyone. Today we have a very interesting topic. It's children should not watch TV. And I am so eager to share my idea about this. I think children should not watch TV is a good recommendation, but not a perfect decision because watching TV has both advantages and disadvantages and you have the right practice in the right time. So now I feel the bad of watching TV. If once on a blue moon, you may meet violent pop-up contents and kids can copy the action, which can lead to murder actually. And it can cost time and you can easily get addicted to your favorite TV show or program and it may cause eye problems and wrong setting position and radiation. Okay, and now you're a bit scared, but also TV has some benefits, like what I on now, VTV7, and that is educational TV channels, like similar to National Geographic, Travel and Discovery. And what's life without entertainment? It's gonna be a boring, boring life, so keep your life balanced with cartoons, news, videos, sports, and travel. And you need to keep up with the world, especially this time, the corona pandemic, with the local news or international news. And when you go out, you need the weather forecast and traffic information. And now, to a few tips for you to keep the good, but go away bad. So you may only just watch in free time, like as it can be your homework, assignment, or meal. And you may set a limitation like one hour per day or 30 minutes per time. And you can control time by a clock, alarm clock, or in the hour glass. And you can get permission from parents to watch TV and kids and, and help them. And you can ask them to select the right channel. They will not mind at all. Each age need different contents and kids under two should not watch TV. And after you watch TV, you can have an iris and watch your face to wash away all the radiation I mentioned in the should not. In conclusion, any kind of activities when we do too much is not good. Same for watching TV. Be safe and healthy all the time. That's all my sharing for this topic. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Okay, so um, Mr. Danny, do you have any follow-up questions? First off, fantastic job, young man. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. So you did a great job. Uh, I want to give you some uh, sustains, things that, that you did well, and then give you some comments about improves. Uh, my first question is, is, do you actually watch TV? Yes. Okay, how much TV do you watch in a week? Um, I watch mostly in free time. If that week I have a lot of free time, I watch a lot. And if I ha I had any time, like this week, because I need to prepare for IELTS face out, I did not watch. I did not watch much. Sure. On average, how much TV do you watch per week? I can answer for per day, but okay. per week, like seven hours or things like that. Seven one hours hour per, per day. week. One hour per day, seven hours of per week. Okay. That one hour of time where you watch TV, what do you watch? What kind of show do you watch? Um, and occasional videos, like break side, five minutes, hacks, things like that. Okay. After you watch TV, do you do any follow-up? After I watch TV, I mostly like play or I have an eye rest or close my eye because, you know, sometimes watching TV makes me very sleepy. Okay, so I think it's important when you consume new knowledge. You say you watch a lot of educational content. You want to, just as I am, take down notes, and you want to then be able to regurgitate 
the information. Repeat the information, maybe to your parents, to your friends about what you're learning. And in this way, you can apply the new knowledge directly. So I, I think things that you did particularly well, you have very good posture, right? You stood very still. I think for an eight-year-old to stand still for that long period of time, that's fantastic. It takes discipline to be able to do that, and we talked about that. Uh, yeah, did, you, did you rehearse for this? Um, I did rehearse a few times at home, but not much. Like, when I come to Hanno, I rehearse like four times, but at home I rehearse twice, so six, seven, six rehearsals of things like that. Okay, so you rehearsed this about ten times, and I'm sure every single time when you rehearsed, you improved. And it's just the idea of practice makes practice perfect. makes perfect, exactly, right? So I think something else you did well is you used hand gestures. You, you held the iPad in one hand, and then in the other hand, you were using your hands to make gestures. I thought that was fantastic. And then also, your eye contact was very good, right? You're looking right into the camera, looking into the audience as you're communicating your message. Uh, something I would encourage you to work on is your enunciation. Do you know what that means? Yes, and I think that's the thing that I'm worst. Okay, so I wouldn't say worst. It's something you just need to work on. First off, to be able to come on this show, on national television to share your perspective, your opinion, I thought you did a fantastic job. But I think one thing is, is you want to slow down. In order to work on your enunciation, you can actually record yourself. You can record yourself on your phone, you can record yourself on your laptop, and then you can listen to what you're saying. Uh, if you slow down and you enunciate, you ac accent certain parts of the word, and you slow down your speech, I think it can be much more comprehensible for other people. Yeah. Okay. So great job today. Very proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. You did a really great, great job. I love listening to your presentation. It gives me a lot of more energy and also excitement. And in your home, do you have a TV? Yes. You so can watch it back when it goes on TV, right? <laughs> oh, that's right. So whenever I'm sad, I would turn on the TV and, and we watch again your performance. We'll be on the IFA YouTube. Sure, sure, for sure. Thank you for your recommendations. Uh, you are going to stand a chance of winning a really big prize, a Voice of the Year, that is a two-week summer camp in the UK. But first, be more excited because I'm going to show you about the prize on the screen. Please take a look. Thank you, Kang, for your presentation. You are the most, one of the most adorable kids I've ever met. And thank you. You are also the most good girl rapper that I have, I have ever met too. And thank you, Kang. I hope you're the best. And um, Mr. Danny, our expert today, would you like to summarize a little bit about what we have talked in the show? Absolutely. So, so when I see students like Min Kang here, I'm truly inspired because it takes a lot of courage. Yes. It takes a lot of effort and also discipline to be able to prepare for something like this on national television. So give me a high five. I think had it like from two weeks ago. Yep, okay. So and before that, today. I did watch it by my own. Okay, good job today. But you did a really great job, and we are so honored because you are a fan of Avaya's Face Off, and we are also a fan of you, a really big fan of you. Do you like to say goodbye to the audience? Goodbye! And see you later!